pine tree I'm getting ready to remove. Figured I'd take a picture before what it looks like up there and then after I remove the pine tree. Later I'm going to put a gazebo in up there after I plateau it around the base where the pine was. So it'll have a round step plateau base. Like three plateaus and then later I could put a gazebo up in that corner of the yard. But this is just a picture in a movie of uh, what it looks like before I cut the pine tree down. Then I'll take another short video after I'm done. Pine tree removal. Removed most of the limbs off of it. That's as high as my ladder will go. Now I'm trying to top the tree before I drop the trunk. I'm sawed part way through it, but I ain't got enough muscle to do the hand sawing anymore today. So we're taking a quick break. And if I get my saws or a sharpened blade for my chainsaw, then I can finish topping it and cutting it up. But this is what it looks like at this point. And that's it. This is what's left of the pine tree in my yard. The stump, I still got to get the dirt off the roots to get rid of the stump. It was up there, now I'm plateauing it. Later I will put a gazebo up there closer to where the pine tree is and the hostas. I'm still working on the walls and filling it in with dirt and digging out the old burn pit that used to be there. That pit's been there since I was about seven years old. And all that dirt beside it is the ashes from all them years. You can see where the hill was all bit filled in and across. It's all fill in across there. From when I was seven and I'm 55 now. But this will all be plateaued and built up. It's all dry stacked. This way it can all be changed, moved, like these ones up here. As you can see, they filled in since this spring. The yard looks bare as bare can be in the spring, but as uh, summer starts closing in, it starts filling in. And you can see it's very beautiful. I still need to add some other plants eventually, but this will give you an idea of what it looks like now. I need to rebuild the steps. The side walls are sinking. You can see the gaps there at the bottom of the steps on the cinder blocks right there and over here. See how it's leaning? Everything's sinking. So I got to pull those out, put in some new dirt and stones and tamp it and level it and build it back. That's the only downfall to dry stacking. But if you live to where you got a big hill like this that comes down into your property and you get a lot of rain, you have problems with flooding. With building these walls, that slows the water down to where it soaks into the water table. So that stopped all my flooding problems. Plus it gives me something to do in a nice garden. And these are all dry stacked. I try to recycle everything in my garden and I propagate everything. We're getting ready to fix a fence up here. The fence fell down. I tried using landscape timbers as posts and that was a big mistake. So I'm going back to the old method. When I was seven years old, my br older brother put in a fence across the back of the property. You can see back here, it's made with railroad ties. And some of this fencing has been there since I was uh, seven years old and I'm 55. So we're in the process of replacing all this. I got holes dug. Last year we put in that fence. The hedges we took out last year. The fence had rot, rotted away many years ago, but it was in the hedges. 
and the hedges just took over the place of where the fence used to be. So we replaced it with the new fence. And now we're uh, digging this out and plateauing it. I got a long way to go here digging. Everything here is hand dug. There is no machinery used. It is all hand dug by me and my brother. I have a broken spine. My brother does a lot of the heavier work, but I still try to help here and there, raking it around, moving stuff. He does a lot of the heavy work. But uh, this is where we're at at the moment. You can see one of my holes up there. It's underneath that wood for a post. We just finished dragging them up in one video. I got, I got up on a extreme fence building. You can see us dragging the poles up with a quad. You can see some of the railroad ties laying up in there, ready to be used. But this is my garden in the spring, what it looks like. It's a little chilly today. Not counting buildings and swimming pools and stuff like that, just uh, structures like this wall here. This wall cost me nothing but the fuel to bring the materials here. It is made from recycled city sidewalks. They break up the sidewalks into pieces. You ask them if you can have some, they let you haul it away. And they make beautiful retaining walls. And that's what these walls are made of. This is all recycled city sidewalks. And then these walls up here we made from a garage that fell down across the street at my grandparents' house, a two-car garage. And I cleaned up, chipped all the mortar off of them, me and my wife. And we built these up here to help slow down the rain. I got some of them that are falling down. You can see here where those are leaning real bad. You can see the gap in there. So I got to rebuild those. I just got to take off this section over here and repack it and stack it. It's a little bit of a pain at times, but for the look and the effect you get, it's well worth it. I just planted some other plants up here. <coughs> in that circle there, I got some uh, pumpkins. And then over there in that circle, I got some watermelon I just put in. And I got my elegant sidebolt hostas I'm propagated, waiting on them to take hold. Those are tree hydrangea right there, and one over here. And you can see here where I got to replace or fits a wall here where it's leaning real bad. And I just took out an upper wall. I'm using it over on the other place over by the burn pit. But I got to rip this all out and straighten this and fix it. And I think I'm going to tear these hostas out. They're getting a little overgrown. <coughs> For right now, this is kind of like my staging area where I put plants until I can figure out where I want to put them permanently as I uh, propagate them and multiply them. I kind of throw them up in here. If I'm unsure what it is, what color it is, or whatever, I put it up in here till I figure it out. <coughs> and that's where I put things. I used to have a set of steps like these ones here, down at the end here on the left but it's a pain in the butt to get up here and turn my big tractor around, so I took them out and put in a dirt ramp. That made things easier to get up here. And this is my other garden over here. I used to have fencing on here, but I took it out. Now that the kids are older, they kind of stay out of things. So eventually I think I'm gonna take this railings out. And I might even be removing these white bark birches. Either removing them or moving them to a new location. Everything here is done by hand. We don't use no machinery. Everything is all done by man. These plants right there, those are leaven lilies. I got to move them to a new location eventually here. I just put them up there for now until I can figure out where to put them. 
See how the walls are leaning real bad right in here. They're almost falling over. In fact, I got some of them jimmied up with some bricks just to hold them until I can get to it to fix them. But I got to dig all them plants out of there. All of those red hot pokers, the hostas, the uh, stone crop, and then down here the irises. All those got to be dug out of there so I can get in there and work. This is one of my mulch piles. It's a, this is the small mulch pile. All my mulch goes in here and then I rototill it every couple of years and put it back into the flower beds. I don't try to use any fertilizers if I can get away without using them. I try to use everything organic and all natural. Those are rows of Sharon's up there against the fence. And then these ones over here I was shaping into balls at the top. This is my rear fence. This is a seven foot chain link fence with railroad ties. The alley is higher at this end than that end of my yard. And there was a little knoll there, so what I did is I built a little dry stack wall. Gives you a nice place to sit in the summer when you have company or whatever. But it makes a beautiful place for your garden. I put my tomatoes in there, tie them right up to the fence and tie the cages together and there ain't nothing pulling them down. I got all my plants in. I got some flats on the front porch with some tomatoes and other things in that got to go in yet. This is my dirt ramp I put in for the tractor to make it easier for mowing. And the kids like it because they can ride their bikes up and down it. This is the other end of the flower bed. Looking back the yard. I've lived in this house since I was in second grade and I've been working on this yard for 12 years now. This is all all done by recycling. Everything's recycled, given to me for free. You can see out front there I got some bricks out there in a pit I'm trying to burn out a stump. That's what that is. That'll be reused for something else later. This is the recycled city sidewalk wall. It's all from city sidewalks recycled. Stacked up, dry stacked, nothing is cemented. And they look nice, very nice, and they work. That one's been in there now for eight years. At least eight years, maybe even longer. And there's my dirt ramp. And the fence we put in here, I still need to get a couple 2x4s in it. The black you see on the fence is foundation coating. You mix it with a little bit of gasoline and brush it on like a stain. And it protects the railroad ties and the wood and it looks beautiful at the same time. Once my green beans get growing up the fence, it turns this all into a privacy fence. In this section here, in the next section, I got my sunflowers, mammoth sunflowers and red sunflowers. In the next section, I got uh, carrots, two rows of carrots on the outside here, this outer edge from this bricks down to that bricks at the pipe. And then up against the fence, I got my cherry tomatoes to where I can tie them to the fence. The next section's down here, from this red pole down, I got two rows of uh, peas, and then up against the fence I got green beans. 